John Malarski, the spacewalk officer today, leading some of the tasks and guiding the teams here in Mission Control Houston with the support of his team in the back rooms through the intricate procedures that have been uh, designed over the course of four years. All the way at that corner. Yeah, what's up for the pump? Pulling closer to you. Right here. All right, I'll stop here at the at the pin here. We'll do one more move. Okay. All right, I have a local down. I have the pump. I have control. You have the pump. You have control. Okay. Twenty-eight minutes into today's spacewalk, you can see the two spacewalking astronauts maneuvering that new pump system over to the end of the Canard Arm 2. Already inside is a foot restraint that uh, Luca Parmitano, the uh, EV-1 for today's spacewalk, he's wearing the suit with the red stripes. He'll be entering into the foot restraint. Morgan will handle the uh, new pump system until Luca Parmitano is fully ingressed or entered into the foot restraint. He'll hand that pump system off to Parmitano, and Parmitano will take it with him as he rides over to the work site of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer.
Jeff can talk. So just before I hand off to you, yeah. I think you once you get ingressed, I think you've got to reach without any further GPA, I, I think. I, I think so, too. Okay, that's cool. Do I you have, have control and you have a red? Can I reach for my red? Okay, and now I'm going to be talking to Jessica for the arms configuration. Luca, brakes are on. You have a go for the ACFR for the brakes. Copy. Okay, it's going to be okay. translation down. So, Luca, you can read all the settings on the APFR for us as you come along it, and pitch the width extender to 6 alpha 7. Okay, it's going to be in work. Luca, if you need a better position for config, a reminder that we will be going starboard and later we can do any of that motion or DCA that you require earlier. Um, no, actually, right now it's all good. I, I might be able to do everything from this position. Maybe the most convenient. Parmitano working to go into the foot restraint now. You're hearing the voice of Jessica Mir from the inside of the International Space Station. She's at the controls of the station's robotic arm. <laughs> Since I was sitting on this stuff. Once but then Martin I know that uh, I can speak on this side. <laughs> 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 you see, pitch this down, so I don't know what With the new pump system in tow over to the work site, uh, the alpha magnetic spectrometer where the pump will be installed. And then for the width, I have a seven. I'm going to. Currently at gold, I'm going to alpha, is that correct? A firm, Luca. Those are all good numbers so far. Tether swap onto the arm. Work. Okay, my arm breaks the fit there is locked black on black on the arm. And I'm ready to navigate back up. It looks like I will need a little bit of GCA to uh, be really far away from here. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, maybe just go ahead and ingress and then come toward me. Uh, I have to uh, drop my... Yeah, 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 absolutely. Right better first. Yep. And, uh, and it looks like you'll have plenty of reach to uh, get somewhere. I think this uh, position here is a pretty good one to draw my safety with my... Yeah.
And Luca, I'll take that handrail number where you dropped your safety tether if you if you see it. Uh, I don't see it. It's uh it's on the fan. Okay. It's a hoop. It's it's uh, right below with six. Okay, that works, Luca. It's a hoop Thanks. On the fan. So the temp store, it's very convenient. Sounds good. Okay, now I'm going to ingress the arm. That makes sense. Okay, copy that, Luca, and would you like that manual maneuver first, or do you want to go where you are? I think it's easier if I just go where I am, and then and then you drive. Okay, copy. Brakes are still on. Okay. That's good, Luca. The only other thing I wanted to talk to you about before you pick up the box is a uh, glove and a hap check, and then we'll check your uh, your glove heaters and cooling. Heaters are bus off. I did a glove check during, I suppose, during the LOS. And uh, I have pristine gloves, too. and my hat is dry. Okay, sounds good. Well played on the um, LOS glove check. It's clever. And uh, the only other thing is uh, lights. Our lights are on. We. I'm concerned that my lights are both on. This is Mission Control Houston. Parmitano still trying to navigate into the foot restraint. You can see him over on the right of your screen. He is wearing the suit with the red stripes. Your B your is He'll be in the foot restraint of the Cannon Arm 2 throughout most of today's spacewalk, as the Cannon Arm 2 will provide him the necessary access to all of the intricate work sites of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. To the left of the screen, Andrew Morgan holding the new pump system. Once Parmitano is in place, he'll hand that pump system over to Parmitano, who will ride the Cannon Arm 2 over to the work site to have it installed, taking sort of the express elevator route to the uh, Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, while uh, Andrew Morgan goes back into the airlock, grabs some tools, and takes the stairs over to the Starboard 3 uh, work site on the top or the zenith facing, that's the space facing side of the International Space Station. Okay, look, I'm going to give you that starboard motion. You're going to be going about a one meter station starboard. Copy. In motion. That's good motion, good clearance on my, from my perspective. Copy. Concur, good motion. All right, Luca, now I'm going to bring you Station Nader about a meter. Okay. Starting motion. That's good motion and good clearance. Kurt. Jessica Mir at the controls of the station's robotic arm, maneuvering uh, Parmitano, currently in the foot restraint. Background there, you can see the International Space Station 266 statue miles over the South Atlantic Ocean. What you're seeing is the east coast of Argentina. Morgan, now handing off the new pump system over to Parmitano. Okay, Jessica. 
Uh, if you still have uh, motion, I will take another half a meter uh, starboard. Okay, copy that, Luca. We'll give you another half a meter starboard. I have a very good view of the arm and uh, everything is clear. Okay, we copy. Starting motion. Motion. Continuing. Here's your half meter. And it's a good position. Do you think you can uh, lower it a little bit? Yeah, that's good. I have a red on it. You can release your red. Okay, you have a red on it. GCA complete, Jessica. And you have a GCA complete. And you have a hand on it. I have a hand on it. I have control. You have control. My red is released. It's your pump. It's my pump. I have control. I have a red. I have everything on it. Okay, and uh, you want me to stand by to help any check on your rot is it looks like you're rotating it just fine. Yeah, I want you to check the AF from your side. Roger Whenever that. you're ready. Yep. Hey, they're looking good. I think uh, the bundle is still attached, and two and four look to be tucked in like they were when we put it in. So, good. A great view of uh, Parmitano at the end of the station's robotic arm. I see your tethers all look good, and I see the uh, tether, your 60 tether you're leaving behind is, looks good. So, one of my foot is out. Okay, stand by. I'm going to get a hand oh, on I'm it. Back in. I'm good. Okay. A great view of the pump system now next to the body of Parmitano. That new pump system, 350 pounds, about 159, kilo, uh, 159 kilograms. Let me have a, a... Yeah, I'm, I'm locked, I'm locked. Okay, okay. all right. Um. Okay, Drew, you're picking up crew lock bag four and heading out. Don't forget your poor men's fair lead at the Sea to Spur. Luca, you're on your way. Jessica, your go for your maneuvers. Okay, stand by, Luca. We have a few things to configure here before we get moving again. Copy. All right, I'm on the move. The work site. To the work site. Parmitano set with the new uh, pump in tow, awaiting for the next procedures for Jessica Mir to maneuver the arm to the work site. In the meantime, Morgan making his way back to the airlock. Inside will be a box of uh, tools. First things first, they needed to move that uh, new pump system over and uh, work together to maneuver it over to that spot where it is now. Now, uh, with some free hands, Morgan's going to make his way back to the airlock and grab some of the tools that are necessary to complete the work here at the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Data looks good. Met rates look good, so we're in good shape. Excellent. Good to hear. Your next job is don't let go of the box and enjoy the view. Two things are uh, mutually exclusive because the view is blocked by the box, but I think I'll hold on to the box. Okay, that's a good call. Welcome to CERN, welcome to the control room of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer here at CERN in Geneva, Switzerland. I'm here with the three AMS scientists who are not on shift right now. The control room is uh, right under us. Uh, and should uh, hit we the western uh, border of Africa uh, a bit late into just the about 20 minutes or so. Parmitano. 
Uh, but since you are uh, sending already your questions, that new box, uh, though, uh, we are going pounds, to be live here and there until the crucial moments of the spacewalk. The work As you have seen, Luca Parmitano is now being transported with a robotic arm the towards the work site easy, where the AMS detector least is positioned in the forward part of the main truss of the station and is carrying an instrument, the upgraded thermal tracker pump system, the cooling system of the AMS tracker, one of the sub-detectors of this detector in space, uh, in order to install it, uh, and uh, uh, that replaces uh, the old system. Uh, this system has been put together here at CERN, and the lead engineer, Zhang Zhang, is one of the star today. She is um, leading uh, uh, the, the walk of Parmitano in a way. She's walking with him from here. Uh, in Sintony, uh, powering it on, on powering way. it off. And here we have uh, Giovanni Ambrosi, one of the three scientists uh, uh, accompanying us through the walk today, who His can explain very quickly uh, what ZAN is going to do uh, and why is it important to work in synchrony with the astronauts during today's spacewalk. So good afternoon, everybody. The, the key point of today, actually there are two points, but the first one will be the connection of the data and power cable to this object, so the big uh, box that you see now being moved by Parmitano is going to be attached to AMS and data and, connect and power cable will be hooked up to it. So the key moment will be when once the connection, physical connection of the cable are done, uh, verify that from ground we can really receive the data and monitor the current status of this uh, UTTPS box. That will be the key point of today. And this is going to happen around uh, 2.15 uh, or maybe 2.10 because the astronauts, as usual, are uh, always beyond <laughs> their tasks. They are uh, extremely uh, competent and they started earlier. Um, we are here also today with Andre Kunin, who is the deputy spokesperson of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer Collaboration. Uh, welcome, Andre. And uh, Mercedes Paniccia, uh, who is also an AMS scientist from the University of Geneva. They're all based uh, here at CERN. The main uh, work is here at CERN. And while Luca is advancing, uh, on the robotic arm towards the work site. I've already received some quest questions from our social media team uh, from YouTube. What speed are the astronauts traveling when they are outside the station? Maybe, Andre, this is for you. <laughs> yeah, the space station is uh, traveling uh, at a speed of about uh, nine kilometers per second. So it takes exactly 92 minutes to, to make uh, the complete uh, orbit around the Earth. That's quite fast. Uh, it's amazing, uh, but because there is no wind up there, <laughs> they don't feel yeah. this uh, this this speed. There actually, there is no air. There is no wind. <laughs> just okay. Thank you, Andre. So we're going to come back uh, um, here on um, live from CERN uh, later on. Maybe we're going to do a, a little live moments, taking uh, questions in 10 more minutes. In the meantime, I uh, uh, invite everyone to enjoy the spacewalk and listen to the NASA commentary. See you later. This one from Timmy, who's asking, what is the device with the gold dishes on the space station? Right now, that's at the bottom, uh, or the top left corner of your screen, just coming out of view now. Those are the solar arrays of the Cygnus cargo vehicle. That's the Cygnus uh, CRS-12. That vehicle was the one that delivered the pump that you're seeing now in the hands of uh, Luca Parmitano. Those are the Ultraflex solar arrays that are used while the uh, Cygnus is in flight to the International Space Station. One of the many cargo vehicles that visit the International Space Station, delivering critical components like the one you're seeing right now in the hands of uh, Luca Parmitano and some of the tools and equipment uh, that are used for the spacewalk itself. Good morning, Ricky. Parmitano undergoing some of the uh, maneuvers by Jessica Mir. Jessica Mir at the hands of the robotic arm, maneuvering Luca Parmitano over to the work site. Give us a moment while we know the load the next show cast. Copy, standing by. Just off screen from this view is Luca Parmitano. At the end of the robotic arm, you can see the latching end effector of the robotic arm, essentially the hand. That gold structure off to the side, that's the uh, 
articulating portable foot restraint, the APFR. You'll hear that acronym a few times. That's the foot restraint that's currently holding Luca Parmitano. Off in the distance, that's uh, Andrew Morgan with tools in tow on his way to the work site, the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. From this view, you can see just off to the top there, that white structure on the very top of the truss, just before uh, the solar rays that are pointing to the top right, 50 minutes into today's spacewalk. Everything on track so far. Okay, we're ready for the next Joecast. This one's going to be 3.5 minutes. Copy. Ready motion. As Parmitano makes his way to the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer worksite, on the top right you see the external pallet delivered by the HTV-8. That's the H-2 transfer vehicle, a Japanese cargo vehicle that delivered uh, lithium-ion batteries earlier this year. That pallet still has three lithium-ion batteries uh, Attached to it, some of the nickel hydrogen batteries from one of the space station's power channels are already on that pallet. The rest will be installed next year. I'm at the work site. Okay, Drew. Crew log bag four is going down the LC, and then you can set up the bags and the APFR. Work. Andrew Morgan reporting that he's already at the work site. Parmitano, you see at the end of the station's robotic arm. He's carrying the. Uh, highlighted component of today, that's that new pump that'll give the uh, alpha magnetic spectrometer the life it needs. That's a cooling pump and will allow the alpha magnetic spectrometer to continue to collect particles throughout the life of the station. Okay, that's position hold. One moment while we load the next showcast. Jessica Meir uh, working at the controls of the robotic arm, currently holding, awaiting that next position. In the meantime, we'll continue to answer Ask NASA questions. Keep using the hashtag AskNASA to send them in. This question comes from David. David's asking, uh, how does the alpha magnetic spectrometer collect particles? A very good question. The key word there in alpha magnetic spectrometer is magnetic. There's a very powerful magnet uh, inside the alpha magnetic spectrometer, significantly more powerful than the magnetic field of the Earth, even. 
And what the magnet does is as uh, cosmic rays and other cosmic particles pass through the alpha magnetic spectrometer, the magnet allows those particles to spin in a certain direction, a certain speed, a certain diameter. And that spin can be calculated and measured inside the AMS as a data point, one of several billion. The alpha magnetic spectrometer essentially gathering data with this magnet, measuring that uh, spin and what kinds of particles. Depending on the uh, direction of the spin and the mass of the particle itself, they can detect whether it's an electron or perhaps an antimatter like positron. Both of the same mass, but if they spin in st different directions, it's a data point for... Uh, no doubt. As are we. Did you uh, make use of that uh, adjustable boat there for the fair lead as well? A data point for uh, more of the p cosmic particles. As soon as I get the back, back down. That may reveal the origins of the universe. In the meantime, Parmitano is still making his way over to the alpha magnetic spectrometer, the white structure you see sort of at the top of the truss there, just before the solar arrays. That's the S3 truss. That's where the uh, alpha magnetic spectrometer is housed. Morgan already there, getting his tool situated, getting ready for uh, Parmitano, making sure everything's set for when he arrives. And we are back in the Payload and Operations Control Center of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer here at CERN with AMS scientists. We've just seen uh, an interesting physics question, and we want to expand on uh, what NASA has already correctly answered. Uh, maybe Dr. Andre Kunin, do you want to uh, answer how the alpha magnetic spectrometers record the passage of particles in space. Yes, uh, AMS is a very complex detector. It has uh, seven subsystems, and uh, each particle which traverses uh, AMS leaves uh, its unique trace. So what uh, we measure for every particle is uh, momentum of this particle, uh, we also measure the charge of the particle and also the sign of the charge. And basically this information, uh, we also measure velocity uh, and uh, all this information allows us to uniquely identify what kind of particle traversed AMS. Okay, that's uh, extremely interesting. And another interesting thing is that right now while uh, they are servicing uh, the, um, the AMS uh, with the spacewalk and during all spacewalks, the detector was continuing collecting particles, right? Mm. Yeah, that, that's correct uh, because we, we can't really switch off uh, AMS. We need to collect data from the uh, various detectors to, to make sure that they are within the operational range. And uh, also we collect uh, data, but uh, without uh, tracker uh, properly working because uh, there is no cooling, which was uh, stopped uh, during the second EVA. So we are uh, collecting data which, uh, which are just to, to, to make sure that uh, the detector is uh, within its operating limits. Okay, and I'm very glad for the people on Facebook who are uh, sending us more questions about the physics of AMS. This is what we are here for. Uh, so, maybe to Mercedes this time, tell us more about the magnetic spectrometer. Do you process the data uh, with the visual equivalent of an FFT? <laughs> uh, no, no, actually, we don't use this technique. We, we translate uh, the, the electronic signal we get from the several uh, subdetectors uh, into quantities that Andre was mentioning. So the speed or the energy or the momentum of the particles, their charge, the absolute value, and also the sign, which is only measured by the magnetic spectrometer that is uh, the detector we are referring to today. We are updating the cooling system of the magnetic spectrometer, which allow us uh, to uh, disentangle negatively charged from positively charged particles. Uh, thank you, Mercedes. Uh, and uh, while you were talking, we can see the thermal system of the MS, the new one, hanging uh, in Luca Parmitano's uh, arms. Uh, it's this box uh, that is very close to your heart, uh, Giovanni, yes. apparently. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So <coughs> the box that uh, Luca is uh, bringing up there and is going to soon to connect to the system 
is, as it, as it has been mentioned, uh, the new um, cooling system. So uh, what happened is that uh, uh, AMS has, uh, is an, um, the data of a detector are transferred to electronic signal and processed partially on board. And uh, all these consume power, and this means we have to dissipate the heat produced by the electronics on the detector. In particular, the tracker that is uh, at the heart, really at the center of the, of the whole um, system, it cannot dissipate this heat simply irradiating to space. So we need this active system with those pumps to bring the heat from the, heart, uh, the inside of the detector up to the radiative panel that you see. The white panel around AMS, they are radiators that tend to eject the, ca the, really the heat from the detector to the deep space. Yeah, I would like to underline that this is the only detector in space uh, with a magnet, right? So Correct. Th this yes. is uh, the what makes AMS so unique. In the meantime, I would like to thank also Euronews for cr cross-posting our live. And there is a new question from Twitter. What is the importance of the International Space Station with regards to the work done here at CERN? Andre, maybe it's for you? <laughs> yeah, the, the CERN and the AMS are uh, complementary to each other because we are studying uh, both uh, fundamental questions of modern physics. And for instance, uh, the focus, uh, one of the focuses both for CERN and AMS is uh, search for dark matter. Uh, at CERN, they call it uh, either supersymmetry or WIMP. Uh, and uh, AMS is looking for uh, this uh, type of particles as well. So the International Space Station is a very, very privileged position to put a detector in space. Uh, right, Mercedes? <laughs> Yes, indeed, because uh, it allows us uh, to be on top of to, uh, the atmosphere. So cosmic rays are charged particles that once uh, will enter the atmosphere, will interact. Uh, while uh, being uh, on the space station, we allow us to detect them before uh, they interact. So to see really, the, uh, be able to identify them uh, precisely. Thank you, Mercedes. In the meantime, I see that Luca Parmitano is uh, getting closer and closer to the AMS detector position on the main truss of the station. Uh, Giovanni, you know by heart the spacewalk procedure, as if you had to do it yourself. That's uh, quite unique for a, for a particle physicist to be knowledgeable of what an astronaut has to do during the spacewalk, right? Yes, absolutely. This is for us really a, a challenge on one side, but really a, something uh, that is really unique. So. Namely, we have been working, and we means really the whole uh, AMS team, we have been working with the NASA people in order to define the detail of a uh, spacewalk procedure. There is obviously all the constraints that come from a space station, the robotic arms, uh, um, the astronauts uh, training, and all that that was obviously being taken care of by the NASA people. But we were obviously giving all the constraints and all the needs that we have on our piece of hardware. So it was a long period of discussion in order to really fine tune everything till the last bit. And as we have seen in the first two EVAs, all this has been successful. Namely, the astronaut knows really well what he has to do as an astronaut and what he has to do in order to really properly take care of our detector. As mentioned, during all the intervention, the detector is still up and running. So power is there. So really need to be treated very, very carefully. Today is a very important spacewalk. Uh, it's number three, and uh, it involves action from here. Can can we just summarize what we are going to see in probably less than 20 minutes, uh, uh, or no, in, in half an hour or so? Yeah, in, a, it's in, about be yeah. in about half an hour is going to be the high time of the of the spacewalk. Yes. So <coughs> up to now, all the activities has been of uh, so to say mm, mechanical activities, so cutting. Uh, um, putting new pieces, but there is no data from this big object. So you have to consider that uh, the big box, the UTTPS that Luca is moving, it has inside four pumps, it has uh, two vessels for the CO2, uh, that is the fluid we are going to use to cool the system, it's plenty of uh, temperature sensor, pressure sensor and all that. So uh, what and, and the electronics then collect all this data and move the data out of the system. So it's quite a complex object. Complex object. So what is going to happen is that the power cable and the data cable will be connected in about half an hour. Yeah. And so at that moment, we will be the key moment to verify that all this big uh, piece of hardware is still 
properly working under nominal condition and that we are able to read all the sensor where all the parameter of the system should be yeah. obviously nominal and this will be really the first uh, major step of this activity. Yeah, because it has gone through a, a flight and a launch. Uh, it, uh, the, uh, the launch itself is a big mechanical stress yeah. for the object. The object now is in a vacuum, so also this is a, a, a stress for the system and uh, uh, all the electronics must be properly working in vacuum, that is also not that difficult, but it's not trivial either. So in about half an hour, it will be the moment of truth <laughs> for the AMS scientists. And in particular, there's one uh, that is working in tune with uh, uh, Luca Parmitano, yeah. that is uh, Dr. Zhang Zhang. What Correct. is she going to do? So she is our lead engineer for the system. So uh, once <coughs> we do get the first data from the system, we will see uh, all the values of the various sensor. And at a given moment, we will need to pressurize one um, piece of the system, namely from a one of the vessel, uh, a valve will be open and the CO2 will flow through uh, not the full system, not yet, but part of it. And uh, so on top of uh, verifying that the full system in terms of electronics is properly working, we will verify that also part of it in the term of the piping and the tubing is also uh, up working and uh, hopefully gas tight because also all these uh, during the launch the vibration were not not negligible and i invite you all to send more questions for our ams scientists here at cern using the hashtag spacewalk for ams uh, any any social media you want to use that cern is on uh, be it uh, twitter youtube facebook uh, send us questions in You'll be able to see, in that, with that lean back, you'll be able to see that you're able to clear AMS. It is uh, at about maybe half a meter. It's perfect. Perfect. Dude, let's do that. Okay. I'm ready. Hey, Drew and Luca, we're ready for motion. Ready for motion. All right, starting motion. Morgan, uh, from his angle, providing some insight. Copy. The view from uh, Parmitano blocked by the 42 by 32 by 16 inch uh, new pump. Still in constant communication with Jessica Mir at the uh, controls of the Cannon Arm 2. Assisted by Christina Cook. Say stop motion here. Stop motion. Okay, so Luca, you know, I'm hold that right there. So we're really close to AMS, and so I think the next thing that we need to do is go toward DLC, toward your back, about a half meter. Uh, uh, you right now you don't have the room to put the pump in front of you. We need to give you some more clearance. So I can I can lean back more. So I would say let her try to the to the position. Then we'll go to my right okay. and I'll lean back rather than drive the arm. I can lift the see, I can do this. Okay. And then I can and then I can split the air, the the pump. Okay, copy. Stand by and I'm gonna move over to AMS then. It'll be forty centimeters to go to the published position. And Jessica, I I think I'll take those. Okay, copy, and Drew, are you ready as well? We're going to go continue 40 centimeters towards your head. Okay. All right, I'm ready for motion. Starting motion. Morgan providing that critical guidance. Big motion, good clearance. Working in tandem with uh, Jessica Mira, the controls of the robotic arm, assisted by Cook inside the International Space Station. Parmitano at the end of the station's robotic arm. Right now, they're trying to get into a position to dock the uh, the new pump system to. Uh, the big concern is just we're radiator to uh, AMS right now, yeah. and you, I think you're going to need some, a little bit of back off. But did you want to accept this? I think I will accept it, uh, Jessica. I'll take 40 centimeters to my right. 
Okay, copy. We need to get into the snapshot mode, so give us a, give us a minute and then we'll get to that. You have eyes on the map? I do. Okay. All right, you're going to feel me just, I'm going to be just giving it gentle guides here. Just to keep it from uh, bumping into a handrail, but we're, we're looking real good. All right, thanks. Showed up a lot quicker today. Okay, Luca, we are ready. We're going to give you that 40 centimeters to your right, and Drew, the clearance for you will be Luca's right shoulder to the right. Copy. Have a good view of it. Okay, starting motion. Okay, good motion. Okay, good motion. Good clearance. So that's 20. That's 40. And uh, GCA complete. Okay, copy. GCA complete. Break Would you like the brakes on now as well? Yes, please. Okay, stand by. Brakes are on. I do. I'm going to leave that. Right. And then I'm going to teach the top down. And then I'm going to need a little bit of guidance for yep. you. I'm going to put a hand on it. Yep. Just going to feel my toes. Yep. Okay. All right. As you're working right, that, guys, over. a reminder not to impart loads from both of you into either the AMS or the EOC at the same time. Okay, copy. Copy. All right. Uh, Luca, come to your, toward your right just a touch. Right? And then adva advance and X. Uh, come back this way. Uh, come back toward your head, toward your head, and back away just a touch. To get a better hand on it. Okay. All right. Let's dry, drive in a little bit. Okay. And you're, in, you're over the soft dock. Give it a push. Okay, and hold that right there in the soft dock. I'm just going to do some chucks and checks here. Here. Oh. Okay. All right, so the AAFs are clear of the docking envelope. And I can see two and four. Um, I think we should be able to pull it down past the vacuum case handrail there. Uh, the vac, the okay, yeah. All right, we're in soft dock, and I see everything is clear. The wires, the uh, cables look good on on your end. Are you able to see around the cables? Uh, I can't see the cable. Yes. Uh, yeah, Gentlemen, like we're handing over here. Going. We'll be back in about 40 seconds. You can get the PGT ready. Talk to you on the other side. Okay. Good hey. work, Luke. Good work to you, too, bro. Hey. Right. Now experiencing a handover of some of that communication from... The International Space Station video and audio should be regaining audio shortly. Might take a little bit longer for the video to regain. What you were seeing was uh, Luca Parmitano at the end of the station's robotic arm. In tow, he brought the new pump system for the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. This new pump system will be uh, used for cooling the uh, experiment the Cosmic Particle Collector on board the International Space Station. So far, this is the third spacewalk in a series of spacewalk designed for uh, repairing this experiment, this box being the critical component of all the work that's been done so far. Okay, that sounds good, guys. We're Bravo 7, clockwise 2, 
following the uh, cow on the PGT. What you heard was uh, Morgan and Parmitano working together to push that uh, new system into place. It's been pushed into place, uh, now working with Jeremy Hansen here in Mission Control Houston. That's the voice you're hearing from this room. He's uh, working, helping the two astronauts through the next steps for programming that space drill, the pistol grip tool, that'll be used for securing the new box into place. We were going to stage it on the Nader vacuum case handrail. Okay, one more time. I have Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Okay, good settings. Correct. And we're going to drive uh, all four bolts, four turns initially, and give us a best uh, effort on an accurate count for those four first four turns in an X pattern. Okay. Okay, study the bolt number one. One, two, three, four. Okay, copy. And I have, I have low torque right now. And the count, I don't have a count, a rev here. No count, it's not count of rev. Yeah, but I counted you at the, uh, that's the 716, so yeah. I, I had you at four. Same here. Okay, go for number four. Okay. One, two, three, four. This is Mission Control Houston. You're hearing Luca Parmitano count the number of turns used by the space drill, making sure that that new box is secured to its position. Much of the work that follows will be making sure that the uh, data and power cables are connected and to uh, use some of the fittings that are secured to the outside of the box. These are the AAFs. These are the alternate fittings used to connect the tubes that have been already cut on previous spacewalks. And welcome back to the AMS Control Center here at CERN. I'm here with uh, AMS scientists, Dr. Uh, Mercedes Panicha, Andre Kunin, and Giovanni Ambrosi. So, Giovanni, we are quite advanced into the spacewalk. Uh, before planned, Luca Parmitano has already um, installed the um, pump system, the cooling pump system, onto the AMS and is now putting the final bolts to secure its position. Correct. So in these uh, <coughs> last few minutes, unfortunately, we had no live uh, video from the station, but Parmitano uh, quite easily, as far as we understand from the audio communication, uh, put the UTTPS in position. Uh, there are four bolts to be uh, secured in order to fix in a definitive manner the UTTPS to the mechanical structure of the detector. So this was the first uh, uh, step. Uh, for today and it's going it's going really smooth and then in few minutes the next steps will be the connection of the cable that are really the point that we are looking it's at. It's the critical time for us. In the meantime the image is back and we have questions from Ariana Kalina on Facebook. Thanks Ariana. What is the life expectancy of the cooling pump system and do particles collected by AMS influence it? Ooh, this is a very good question. And it's a double question, so double you can question. share it with your colleagues so if you want. I so the life expectancy first, how long is it going to last? It's a question oh, so relevant because this is the fourth system yeah. you're the, this is right? Yeah, that, that's the point, that this system is going to be installed, at, is being installed at right now exactly because the old one was actually getting older and older. It was not foreseen for very long uh, operation, uh, namely more than the eight years that we are running the detector up there. So this new system uh, will guarantee us uh, the uh, full functioning of the experiment at least uh, for till 20, I would say 28. That is the planned uh, lifetime, as today, of, the lifetime of the station. Right. And yeah, actually, yeah. obviously, with the big effort of making this new system, uh, the, our lifetime will be possible to be extended even beyond this limit. So e obviously, we are taking some advance such right. that if there will be, as all we all hope, an extension of a lifetime of the station itself, you are ready. we are ready to continue to take data there. And maybe for Andre, are the particles collected by MS influencing 
the system but or having any impact on it? <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, in some sense, uh, they are influencing all the materials because uh, radiation uh, changes the property of, uh, of materials. But this uh, pump system is on or off. Because when the system is on, uh, it uses its resources, so it uses its uh, lifetime. Okay, so in the meantime, while Luca is adding more and more bolts <laughs> on the system, uh, there is a question, maybe this is for you, Mercedes, from James Tang on Facebook. Thank you, James. Why don't we see any stars uh, uh, in space? Is it due to light pollution? We don't see stars while they're working. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Why we don't see stars from here? Um, it's I, probably I light pollution. Yeah, light probably pollution. it's light pollution. I, yeah. Um. It's true that it's, it looks quite dark. Yeah, it looks although dark, although yeah. the station is moving mm -hmm. constantly at twenty-eight thousand kilometers per hour, now we can see oh. on the on the sign where it is located, and oh. it's uh, going to be day soon. Or it right. can be that the light that is shining on the station itself uh, is too bright uh, that we don't see the, the in background uh, the faint uh, light of the stars as well. Mm -hmm. uh, next question from Twitter. How long can the astronauts stay out on a spacewalk? Is there a detrimental effect on their body? Yes, so the, <coughs> the typical maximum duration and what uh, we are uh, witnessing today is one of these very long uh, EVAs is of the order of six to seven hours. This is not because really of uh, extra detrimental um, effect on the body of the astronauts, but because it's really tough to be there and move uh, in uh, free fall, how it's called, that is namely you don't feel the gravity, you have to be able <coughs> to move your arms and legs and hence, in particular, for Parmitano this time, uh, being with these big gloves and big uh, suit, space suit, so it's really a big uh, physical effort for the astronauts to be there. Yeah, Luca compared it to running uh, an iron marathon, which he does actually, so he's, uh, that, that's the point. he's uh, well trained for that. And the suit is not really a suit, it's a, it's a vehicle basically that is uh, suited on you. <laughs> Uh, there is another question from YouTube. Uh, what's uh, the video screen on the far right on the screen? Is it the live from CERN? Yes, hello. It's us, live from CERN, from the control center of the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer here at CERN. Uh, we are following this uh, live, this spacewalk very closely because uh, there is some action involved on the part of your colleagues who are now sitting in the control room on shift, and in particular from uh, Dr. Zhang Zhang. Correct. So we have, uh, you may see probably that there is, uh, the control room is plenty of people. Uh, we are all eager to see how the system will behave once power and data cable are connected. And uh, we have uh, Zanzan as our lead engineer, but there is the whole, almost the whole team that has worked in the last three years to develop and build, assemble and test uh, the hardware such that if there is any even small um, difference from the nominal behavior, we have all the experts around and we can immediately try to understand at our best eventual uh, problems that we don't expect, by the way, and give feedback to the NASA colleagues in Houston, uh, s telling them what we uh, can actually understand from our data. I think that uh, Luca has just um, uh, mentioned the POC and um, uh, the other astronaut, Drew Morgan, were uh, asking him to call them. <laughs> <laughs> so can you explain to us how uh, are your colleagues in the park communicating with the astronaut? Is it a direct communication? Uh, no, so I it's not a direct communication. What happens is that uh, NASA has a system that it's called voice loops and we can hear on the NASA TV the direct communication from a ground station to, uh, to the ISS. Which, and then which is Houston. Which is Houston. Yeah. And then uh, there are other uh, channels, so to speak, on which the more and more technical uh, details have are being discussed, but not all these details need to arrive to astronauts, otherwise we make them uh, crazy with eh, hundreds of, of voices. So, right. But via one of these uh, communication channels, uh, from our POC here at CERN, we communicate uh, to our uh, direct counterpart, the NASA people that, uh, we with whom we have been working the last three years, uh, such that then they can move up the information till it reaches the astronauts. 
Yeah, we can now see a very uh, nice close up from the helmet of Luca, the camera on Luca's helmet of the uh, system of the tracker uh, pump system right now. Uh, wh what do we see and uh, what is he doing right now? <gasps> exactly. What you see are those famous cables that is now going to connect them. So he will connect the power cable. You see in the right end. Yeah. So there is no power on this cable right now. Uh, Luca is going to remove the cap, the protection cap that is there. Once removed, uh, he will connect the, the cable uh, to the UTTPS uh, interface. The similar operation for the data cable. And only once we get his green light from with a command via computer from our control room here at CERN, we will really apply power to the cable and therefore a power to the electronics of a UTTPS. So in the meantime, the cap has been removed from the cable. So it's uh, ready to install. You can continue sending your questions. Um, there is one, what is the major, major motto of this spacewalk? Major? Motto, I don't know what they mean by that. Uh, the, uh, oh. The slogan, uh, it's critical for yeah, AMS. De definitely it's critical for us. <laughs> it's difficult to invent one uh, uh, right away, but it's definitely a critical In bocca al lupo, I would say in yeah. Italian. In Italian, <laughs> so that would be easy. Which uh, means good luck, <laughs> because without um, this connection, you cannot, um, you cannot operate uh, the pump. But we can say a few words about uh, the importance of uh, the thermal uh, pump system of the tracker. We can... Uh, repeat uh, how important it is to keep to yeah. the constant operating temperature. Yeah. So <coughs> our detector is uh, quite delicate and uh, all in all we do need to run it at its best performance. And like it happened for your computer or your mobile phone, uh, the electronics is producing a lot of heat and you need to, on the contrary, to keep the temperature constant and low enough to get the best performance. And this is the role of our cooling system. Mm -hmm. So to keep it constant, such that there are no mechanical deformation on the detector itself, and to keep it uh, low enough, uh, average temperature is in between zero and 10 degrees Celsius, uh, such that the detector in itself behave uh, mm, at its best. Uh, and so we can, uh, I don't say easily, but we can properly distinguish the type of particle that are going through and the trajectory of a particle within the magnetic field. I have a question from Facebook. Uh, it's a question of um, theoretical physics, maybe relativity, I think. Does time slow down on the space station compared to the Earth? Yes, <laughs> a, li a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in, in fact, uh, I want to recall uh, uh, an experiment which was, uh, well, difficult to, to call it experiment, but uh, there are twin astronauts uh, uh, brothers uh, Kelly and in fact one was on the ground one was uh, on the space station and uh, scientists who observed them tried to find you know tiny differences uh, in their behavioral patterns uh, well which may be attributed to to being present on on the space station but the w for what concerns uh, time difference, it's a really uh, it tiny, tiny amount. Negligible. Maybe not even measurable. <laughs> it's, uh, it's measurable. Uh, <laughs> it's measurable, uh, but it's tiny and uh, at the level of 10 to the minus 8 uh, seconds. They are powering the box. So we are uh, reached. Um, I've heard uh, Drew Morgan, we are going to power the box okay. right now. The moment of truth. Luca is making power connections. <laughs> and uh, Houston is working in tune with us, with the uh, Payload and Operation Center. I don't know if you can see this a screen from downstairs. Uh, is it close enough? Huh? Prendilo, prendilo. Okay. So, you take. Uh, okay. 
no data, no, no data yet. No data yet. So what are you doing, Giovanni? You're, what are you checking on so your PC? I, I'm using my private PC, so to speak. Now, jokes apart, uh, we do have a, a monitoring system, obviously, because we do monitor all our data from the control room here. But some of them we can monitor also from our offices. Yes. And so we do have. Um, the monitoring active now, we don't have yet uh, f fresh new data, so this means that the operation are still uh, um, running, namely the operation to connect cables and uh, get uh, the power to the system. So obviously we want to be careful in uh, uh, giving power to the system only when we get the green light from, uh, Houston. from Houston that uh, Parmitano has finished his uh, uh, handling of the cable itself. Now he's um, uh, handling a, a tool So apparently they are powering up uh, your colleagues downstairs in the park. Yes, there are everybody's around the same console, so, so yes, <laughs> the things are happening right now. Right, everybody's around uh, Zan. <laughs> Can we see Zan, Zang, guys? Okay, so you maybe you can comment on what the colleagues are doing right now. Yes, yeah, so <coughs> as mentioned, uh, from with a command from, from here, uh, the power will be applied to the box, and then a uh, few minutes later, the, the data will be flowing from the station to the ground station of NASA, and then via the internet, a dedicated channel uh, down here at CERN. So obviously, all this uh, uh, is not really uh, in uh, zero time, so it takes a couple of minutes, all in all, uh, for all this data to go up and down. So we are in this... Uh, critical moment in which we are uh, waiting the first data to come down. So now he's uh, drilling, uh, Luca is drilling. Um, yeah, he's securing the connectors to the... Uh, which means that the power is off. <coughs> yeah, I right think now. yes, mm. yeah, it's still. So your colleagues that we see here are all members of the uh, UTTPS uh, group, the yes. Upgraded Thermal Tracker Pump System group, uh, led by Zhang Zhang, that we can see in the screen. Uh, she has a PhD from the University of Grenoble and has been working in uh, AMS since she was a student. <laughs> yes, definitely. And the other two colleagues? Uh, so from the right, you have Zhang Zhang. She was working already on the existing uh, system, the cooling system that we are replacing right now is on the right. Then in the middle there is uh, Lorenzo Mussolini. He is from INFN Perugia and University of Perugia. He is doing currently his PhD on these, uh, on these activities. He has followed the uh, space qualification, vibration and thermovacuum test of the box and is now following the operation. And then the person on the right is uh, Torsten Siedenburg from ETH, uh, sorry, RWTH Aachen in Germany. And this is the university where the, the, the UTTPS itself has been really assembled and uh, built. Uh, built. Yeah. Okay, I have um, another question. What are the risks and the critical operations of this EVA? <laughs> Oof, difficult. So. <coughs> For for the UTTPS and for us, uh, the risk is uh, actually not much in this particular uh, operation right now. This is, uh, so to speak, a, an easy part of the activity today. Uh, later on, uh, Parmitano will have to connect uh, eight aluminum pipes, three millimeter in diameter, in order to connect this UTTPS uh, box that we see now on the screen uh, to the pipes in order to get the CO2 fluid getting into inside AMS to cool the electronics, as we mentioned. So uh, the mechanical operation there is very delicate. Uh, those uh, connector connection has to be pressure tight because the pressure inside the system will go up by several uh, bars. So uh, we obviously we cannot lose uh, CO2 in space, in particular because this will make uh, unusable our system. So th that will be the critical part uh, on our side. Uh, the connection of the cable is, as we have seen, uh, running quite smoothly. What does uh, Zan sees on her screen? 
What is she following right so, now? So well, she's following obviously the, the operation, the same uh, video we are looking at here. And she has, um, I would say, of the order of uh, uh, 20 to 30 different um, screenshot and uh, web pages uh, that show our data. Mm -hmm. For the time being, uh, uh, most of them are empty. We do see only the data of the existing system. Mm -hmm. So we don't see yet the new, the new data. Okay. And then she has a commanding window uh, with a software that has been developed here, uh, here at CERN, such that she can send appropriate command to the system to power on, uh, monitor, and all that. And is she listening to Houston on Definitely. her headphones? Yes. Yeah. And talking to them as well? Yes, she's uh, talking to them, not directly to the astronauts, but as I mentioned before, into the system such that the uh, information are then moved up to the astronauts. Mm -hmm. So the power and data cable have been connected. Yes. So now the astronaut is being moved uh, around the AMS. to to move to the next part of the task yeah. he is now being moved uh, and the next part of the task is as i was mentioning the, the mechanical connection of the pipes of the tubes uh, of the mm -hmm. system yeah. the rough cut tubes will be a uh, clean cut to allow them to be a nice uniform shape and then start the swaging process the swaging um devices that the alternate fitting are on the currently on the box. They'll be taken off and uh, installed one by one on the tubes that are cut. Once they're clean cut and have a nice uh, round shape to them, and measured using some of the tools that have been specifically designed for this spacewalk, including a straightener. That's also a straightener and a measuring device. Before we get to that, Parmitano is still making his way over to the worksite. Morgan and Stan here at the. IMS Control Center. We've received um, at CERN. We received another question through Facebook from James Tang. Will the AMS be interfered with uh, electromagnetic radiation generated from the Earth? Does the AMS have an impact from electromagnetic radiation coming from the Earth? Yeah, th this is a very good question. Uh, in fact, uh, conditions on the space station are uh, quite different from uh, normal conditions which you, you know, uh, experience uh, in, in, in your environment. Therefore, uh, every detector which is uh, going to be placed on ASS, ISS should pass through series of uh, tests which uh, are twofold. First, uh, it should uh, withstand, uh, it should be uh, compatible with uh, the electromagnetic environment, both uh, static and uh, varying environment on the space station on one hand, and on the other, it should not really interfere by itself too much with the existing systems on, uh, on the space station. Uh, and AMS, uh, as a detector, has passed all, all these tests. So, of course, uh, there are some uh, interferences, but uh, they do not really impact neither station from AMS nor AMS from the space station. Thank you, Andre. In the meantime, I, I saw you were chatting with uh, Lorenzo, who is down uh, in the control center. Uh, What's the news? Mm -hmm. So we are chattering with the people in the in the console, as we say, in the control room. So power has been applied to the UTTPS, and we are now waiting uh, the loop to close, namely to get the telemetry data on ground. So this takes a couple of minutes more. Ah, OK. So the, the so power is on. Power is on, Which yes. means that it's working. Yes. This means that all the connections are are good and now we are really waiting the, the detail of the data, the telemetry data to really verify the detailed status of the system up there. Okay. I have a question myself. How, how could um, you continue 
take data without a cooling system so far? Okay. <laughs> So, uh, as I mentioned, there are uh, seven subsystems in AMS uh, which uh, function in a synchronous but independent manner. So, uh, at the moment, uh, even Tracker uh, uh, is uh, partially functioning because, uh, for instance, uh, the very top plane of the Tracker and very bottom plane of the Tracker are not really much affected by the shutdown of the existing cooling system. So therefore, uh, AMS is uh, taking data as, uh, as usual, except the part of the tracker which is in the magnet, which is affected by the heat generated in, in, uh, in the confined volume, uh, is not really functioning as, as nominal. So now that uh, the new cooling system is connected, you're gonna take better data or more data <laughs> with the whole detector yeah no, not instantly because uh, first uh, we have to do a series of checks uh, and in, in in fact the this uh, connection procedure to connect uttps uh, to the existing pipes is a very delicate and uh, complex procedure which basically starts with uh, uh, proper cutting of the uh, old tubes uh, because the, the, uh, in the previous EVA there was a rough cut now it should make uh, smooth such that uh, the old tubes fit in the advanced, in the advanced AMS uh, fittings okay that's where it's uh, going right now and then uh, once uh, all these uh, fittings uh, are completed uh, the system will be filled with uh, CO2 such that uh, there is a uh, pressure around uh, 30 bars and the on the next TVA these uh, fittings the AMS advanced fittings uh, should be checked for uh, leak tightness mm -hmm. okay Where are we into the spacewalk, uh, Giovanni? At uh, which point? So we are <coughs> almost uh, at the mm, half of the time that uh, the astronauts will spend outside the ISS today. So <coughs> uh, the robotic arm is uh, slowly moving uh, uh, Luca Parmitano i into the place where he will have to, to connect the, the tubes. And now the, the rest of the time basically will be connecting uh, all of those, it, uh, they, uh, there are a total of uh, eight, six in basically the same location and another two in a different location. So uh, we will, um, Luca will start from the six. So the first uh, step for him will be to move into one of the location and connect to six. And then again being moved by the robotic arm to the other location and then uh, go back uh, inside the station. In the meantime, we start to get some of the telemetry data. Oh, fantastic. And not yet enough data to really verify everything, but we do get data back from the system. So the so system is talking is to you. The system is up and running. Now we will look for detail in the next minutes. And in the meantime, I invite you all to take the opportunity of having three AMS uh, practicing scientists uh, available for you for your questions. Use the hashtag spacewalk for ams and we will answer all your questions. There is one from uh, Norberto. Hi, Norberto. Uh, so he's asking whether the new uh, component, uh, is it designed for a potential new reparation phase in case of problems uh, through other spacewalks? Mm. I mean, we were saying before that we expect it to last at least uh, until 2028, right? Mm. So this is different from the previous systems that were not foreseen for the entire lifeline yeah, on the station. In fact, uh, I want to recall that uh, the existing system was uh, designed to, to last uh, two or three years. Uh, in fact, uh, but there was a safety margin, so it lasted uh, over eight years. Mm -hmm. Uh, the new system is, in fact, a much improved uh, version of the old system. So we expect it to, to last minimum eight years and certainly it will last uh, beyond 2028. Mm. 
where are we compared? So we are almost uh, we are almost at the end of the power data cable installation, right? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And this is uh, really uh, about one third of the uh, of this EVA. So 60 percent is uh, yet to come. Ah, 60 percent is yet to come. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But this is the phase in which they are communicating uh, with your colleagues down in the control center. Yeah, and it people seems to go smooth. <laughs> people in the control room are really busy. This is their time. Are you relieved that uh, you're getting telemetry? <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> but uh, one thing that you learn uh, I in the control room is that communication, although we are used to, as we mentioned, instant, and as communication. We see, instant communication and live from space, live from everywhere, <laughs> while the, the data from, from our detector are uh, coming uh, slowly, and then we need the time to really carefully cross check what's, right. what's going on. Also, because there is uh, a huge work of uh, Encrypting all the data, uh, verify that the data communication is uh, correct. I mean, once we are on our on the web uh, with our computers or uh, smartphones, if there is any error in the communication, we can probably continue to read uh, the the web page. Or when we are having a chat, uh, if there is one word uh, uh, badly written, we still understand. While with our data, we have to really double check that all the details are, are correct. So this takes also time into the encoding and decoding of the data itself. Right. Really co time, I mean, uh, computer time to really right. do all these operations. So mm -hmm. it's going to go slow, but first indication are definitely good. Oh, very good, very good. So right now, uh, Luca has reached this uh, new position for the next set of operations that involve uh, um, the, the cables that were disconnected uh, during last uh, EVA, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, 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 t the tubes, the pipes that were disconnected during last EVA. So yeah. now uh, from the cables that he connected a few minutes ago, now he's going to do uh, only mechanical activities, uh, cleaning up the cuts. So really mm, preparing the end of the cable to be properly swedged into this new system. Maybe this is a good time to remind a little bit about the science of AMS because uh, you've been collecting over 143, uh, now 149 billion cosmic rays, uh, bil bil billion, million, billion cosmic rays, and uh, with all this data, a lot of uh, uh, new science and new insights into the knowledge of cosmic rays has come. Yes, indeed, we have already uh, published results on the, the energy spectra, so the intensity of fluxes of individual particles like uh, electrons, uh, positrons, uh, protons, and also nuclei uh, from uh, helium up to oxygen. And now we are studying uh, heavier nuclei. From this we are uh, having a lot of insights uh, in the property of cosmic rays, uh, namely what happened to them uh, when uh, they leave the sources and they propagate uh, through the interstellar medium, which is pervaded by magnetic fields and uh, particles, which are mostly proton and helium. And this uh, uh, is basically the, the background on which uh, to, to start uh, searches for uh, new physics, uh, like uh, the signals that may come uh, from uh, dark matter particles, or uh, even to understand uh, the asymmetry between uh, the matter and the antimatter in the universe. Okay, uh, so this is a completely new insight into the knowledge of cosmic rays. Uh, you're rewriting uh, the science of cosmic rays, yeah. basically. <laughs> yes, indeed, because of the precision of uh, our data, we are giving the theorists uh, uh, the, the data they needed uh, since uh, hundreds of years ago when cosmic rays were first... Uh, you're giving the theorists a hard time because they yeah, cannot exactly. make... <laughs> they're not having uh, their theories... Uh, uh, their predictions uh, fulfilled, basically. Exactly, so they are currently working hard uh, to make sense uh, and of all uh, the, uh, the data that we are giving them. And uh, there is also new insight on uh, antimatter from AMS. Yeah, sh sure. The, uh, as I mentioned uh, already in the very beginning, we are uh, addressing fundamental questions of uh, modern science. But, uh, uh, well, which includes uh, dark matter and antimatter. But uh, also, I want to draw your attention to the fact that uh, 
our data is of extreme practical uh, knowledge for uh, further uh, exploration of the solar system. For instance, uh, what we are measuring in that respect, which is probably not very interesting for fundamental science, but uh, very much uh, interesting for uh, the travel to Mars, for instance, is to know how the flux of uh, galactic uh, cosmic rays changes uh, in the solar system. So we measure it precisely at Earth. Does it, uh, is it different uh, at Mars uh, uh, orbit? Is it uh, different at, uh, for instance, uh, Jupiter orbit and uh, further away from, uh, from the Sun? Mm -hmm. And uh, another question is, uh, how does it change with time? This is also one of our interesting results, which has uh, very practical applications. Okay, and um, AMS has been dubbed by many the dark matter hunter. Are there any new insights into this great mystery of uh, today's uh, physics? Yeah, uh, we have very interesting results uh, on uh, positrons and uh, antiprotons, which uh, both uh, hint uh, us uh, which uh, favor theories which uh, with uh, heavy dark matter particles. But uh, in order to, to make a definitive uh, conclusions, we need to advance in uh, the energy range, go to higher energies. Uh, for this, we need to collect more data, more statistics, and increase precision of our uh, measurements, which are already done. OK. Thank you, Andre. We have more questions from our social media. Okay. So what's next after, after this um, set of um, operations that they're doing right now? So while uh, Parmitano is uh, connecting all the, all the pipes, uh, people down in the control room are uh, checking really in details all the data that are coming from, from the system. So the first indication, in particular the, the pressure, that, uh, pressure data that we get are good, so namely the, the system is uh, nominal in terms of no pressure on some sensor and pressure where it should be, namely in the uh, refill vessel, namely where we do have the CO2 uh, under pressure, 60 bar, um, that has, uh, uh, um, is uh, nominal as it has been launched. So the telemetry has finally so telemetry arrived. So telemetry is arriving slowly and we are uh, using all this data. So Very then uh, after um, Luca will have connected all uh, the eight AMS fittings, uh, we few days more will pass and uh, uh, then the next step will be verifying that all the fittings are really pressure tight and only at that moment we will be able to switch uh, on the pumps and really having the CO2 fluid circulating, namely start to cool the system in nominal, in nominal conditions. So uh, as today we verify only the UTTPS in itself, yes. the, the big box that has been installed up there. Uh, in few days from now we will uh, verify the system namely the UTTPS plus the all tracker. the rest of the system and the tracker mm -hmm. to verify that the full system is uh, up and running. In the few next few days without an EVA, basically? Without, yes, we just wait and then there will be the last EVAs uh, uh, to really verify that everything is correct. So one of the questions coming from YouTube is exactly about that. Uh, when uh, is going to be the last EVA? Is it going to be number four or there will be a fifth EVA to service the alpha magnetic spectrometer? So far it goes uh, really well and we expect that uh, the fourth EVA will be the last one. Okay, there is another question about dark matter. What are exactly dark matter particles? Well, first they don't exist yet. Thi this <laughs> the is a uh, very <laughs> interesting <laughs> and intriguing questions. So uh, at, at this moment we don't really know the nature of uh, dark matter particles because they are not yet discovered. So when we are ready, uh, we'll <laughs> publish a paper on that. But they are necessary to explain something that uh, we cannot explain. 
right? Well, yeah, the, 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 there are multiple uh, hints that uh, bulk of the, uh, of the matter in the universe we, we just don't see. So it's not matter like uh, we, are, uh, we are having at Earth or in, in the solar system. So this, uh, matter does, uh, this uh, dark matter does not really interact much with ordinary matter. Therefore, it's invisible. It interacts only by uh, gravitation. And uh, th there are at least four hints, uh, like uh, rotation uh, curves of, uh, of uh, spiral galaxies, like uh, formation of uh, clusters, and, uh, well, also lensing effects, and, uh, and so on. And I would like to say hi also to our uh, ESA, European Space Agency friends uh, who are uh, following us, and of course uh, Euronews, uh, whom our, our partner. Um, so, in the meantime, I think there is still progress uh, with the spacewalk. What, what can we say, uh, Giovanni? Giovanni Ambrosi yeah. is the AMS scientist who is better trained for a spacewalk <laughs> among the three Al of you. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. <laughs> No jokes apart. So um, uh, we are uh, slowly checking uh, uh, one by one all the bits and pieces of the system up there. So nothing uh, exciting, but uh, what is really, really important for us, everything is that we are checking is uh, really under nominal conditions. So we are really happy that there is no excitation because excitation means something is not working. Right. And this is not what we want. So yeah. we are really quiet and calm because things are running uh, smoothly. And you're receiving data that and indicate the good functioning yeah, absolutely, yeah. of uh, the new of system, system that has yes. just been installed by uh, Luca Parmitano. Maybe let's go back a little bit on uh, dark matter uh, with uh, uh, Mercedes. People are asking uh, if there are any implications uh, with CERN. AMS is a dark matter hunter. Uh, what is CERN doing um, in the meantime? <laughs> so actually, in, um, we experimental particle physicists, as uh, we are, <laughs> have uh, three kind of uh, approaches to investigate for uh, dark matter hunting. So in, uh, with AMS, uh, what we do is to look at signal of dark matter particles that may be in the universe and to see the effect of their uh, annihilation when they collide with the among themselves or they decay. At CERN, they try to produce uh, this particle uh, from collision of uh, protons so with the Large Hadron Colliders. So they are trying to produce themselves uh, these particles. And uh, in a third way is uh, using uh, underground, uh, uh, in underground uh, detectors to, to have uh, the less uh, background noise as possible. Uh, and uh, in these huge detectors, you, they put uh, a big amount of mass uh, since uh, this particle, as uh, was mentioned be before, uh, are called uh, the weakly interacting massive particles. It means that uh, they interact uh, very little. So to make them interact, you need uh, a big uh, amount of matters. And they try to observe uh, the signal, the possible signal of these particles uh, when they traverse uh, this uh, chunk of matters, the detectors. By measuring the recoil of the nuclei that makes uh, the detector, it's like when you have two balls, a big one, which will be this weakly interacting mass particle with a small one. And so these are very difficult experiments. Uh, they are all uh, precise experiments, uh, but so far there are no clear signals. So all, uh, we are all from these three techniques uh, try to hunting for uh, these particles. And there is another um, question from Facebook. Nadim asks, what is the huge number that we just commented a moment uh, ago, uh, now reading 149,232,620,322? What is that number in the center, uh, central screen of the AMS control room here at CERN? Mm -hmm. Good, good question. This is a uh, number of uh, charged cosmic ray particles uh, collected by AMS. And uh, I also want to mention that this is, uh, in fact, more than all uh, charged particles collected by other experiments. In the ever? Yeah. Ever. So AMS has collected in 11 years of life, in eight mm. years of life? Eight years. Eight years of life, more uh, cosmic ray charged particles than any other experiment ever on Earth. That's amazing. All, so all exp other experiments combined. And it's a live counter. Yeah, correct. 
so it uh, it keeps changing so it comes uh, in bunches and each bunch corresponds to basically a data transmission from uh, from AMS we can also see it uh, just uh, behind us and there are various screens around the control room showing physically the um, the cosmic rays that traverse the various layers uh, of uh, your space detector. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I don't really uh, know whether uh, you can see the, the screen behind us, but uh, in fact, uh, there are several screens which show particles live uh, as they come to the ground. Okay, Giovanni, so um, what's new on the progress of uh, Luca Parmitano's and Drew Morgan's spacewalk to service your detector, yes. the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer? Okay, so <coughs> what we can say now, and it's confirmed from the people, from the real experts uh, downstairs in the control room, is that uh, um, we got everything uh, that Luca had to do on the UTTPS itself is already done. So as mentioned, uh, power cable connected, data cable connected, we are able to send commands and to receive back telemetry data and uh, what uh, is called the hand valve because it's opened really by hand by parmitano has been opened and so we see gas uh, pressure into the system so this also has been uh, uh, completed by parmitano and completely verified uh, with our data on ground so Amazing. on the uttps itself for today we job done job done <laughs> so we really thank Luca, Andrew, and the full NASA cream, uh, team for uh, for this big uh, big achievement. And they are ahead of time. They they they, they completed uh, all the tasks uh, related to the thermal tracker pump system. Uh, this is really in advance. astonishing how fast. I mean, they make uh, look like uh, that it's really easy to operate up there. That eventually it is, but we are really happy that we managed to do everything uh, uh, really fast. Uh, without any major problem. We do have all our data, so now people is looking really into all the details to verify that up to the last bit, everything is nominal, and in parallel, Luca is continuing his uh, work on the um, CO2 pipes for the connection, as we see on the screen right now. So before leaving uh, our audience uh, from uh, Euronews, from ESA, uh, from the CERN social media channels. I welcome a few more questions, but in the meantime, I wanted to ask you, this has been a very uh, crucial time for uh, the AMS detector in space, but apparently spacewalk number four is gonna be even more crucial. What's planned? <laughs> so the, the last EVA for us, I it's a simple activity for, for the astronauts, but you have to very uh, simply uh, to witness and verify that uh, uh, the particular uh, mechanics of those AMS fittings, these connectors, uh, are uh, properly adjusted such that uh, they demonstrate that there is no CO2 leak, namely the system is uh, gas tight. Yeah. Once this is done, then uh, we can uh, start to operate the system, namely pa um, powering on the pumps and start having the, the pumps that move the CO2 fluid inside the system. It will get warm on one side and then get cold on the other side really to keep the overall temperature at in our nominal ranges. But this operation we can do only once we know that the system is gas tight. And, and, it's, a yeah. and it's, a, it's a tough time for you. It huh? will be a tough time for us. Less, less difficult for the astronauts because it's a simple verification, but definitely a tough time for us. Also because uh, the moving parts of the pumps, uh, we will have to verify that they have been able to withstand the mechanical stresses at the launch. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the last step they will have to do is to cover everything with what it's called the MLI, multi-layer insulator, a blunt blanket that cover the hardware uh, to avoid uh, the direct sunlight uh, impinging on the box because this will also generate and hit the load on the UTTPS itself and this is not good for the performance of the system. Yeah, one imagines that in space uh, temperature might be constant uh, but mm. it's not the case. It's uh, not the case. <laughs> so if you're facing sun, it can be very hot. Yeah. If you're safe facing what we call deep space, can be very cold. So the, the non-trivial uh. part and the trick is completely there in adjusting the system such that on average and uh, all, all over the orbits, the temperature are as constant as possible. Uh, at how many degrees, more or less? So uh, the ideal temperature the for the ideal AMS. temperature for the detector inside uh, it's uh, let's say between zero and ten degrees Celsius. Yeah. And with a variation that should be less than one degree per orbit. 
uh, one orbit is one, uh, 90 minutes, as we mentioned, and the external part of the EMS can easily see a temperature difference during one orbit uh, of about uh, 100 degrees. So uh, it's really mm, non-trivial system uh, to s make it such that on the outside, as mentioned, 100 degree difference, on the inside, less than a degree difference. And that's why it was so important uh, to bring this uh, upgraded thermal tracker pump system up to the station, uh, launched uh, with, uh, with the rocket and uh, transported by Luca Parmitano up to the AMS outside the space station, installed with all the operations that we have seen, connected, uh, powered from here, and now uh, the connection is uh, going to be completed very soon. So I would like to thank you uh, for taking the time to give us all these uh, very important explanations. Uh, thank you, Mercedes uh, Panicha. Thank you, Andre Kunin. Thank you especially to Giovanni Ambrosi, who, who could qualify for our next space work. <laughs> and uh, thank for all the, the people that have been following us and sending us uh, questions. So we don't know yet whether we're really following um, space work number four. And we will keep you informed. In the meantime, we invite you all to continue following the NASA feed of this important spacewalk, which will be concluded around uh, 8 p.m. Central European time. Thank you. Thank you, and bye-bye. To be pushed into the alternate fitting for swaging. Okay, and we'll need tape next, Drew. Okay. <laughs> The length must be very precise for a good swage, making sure that the connection of the tubes is good, that it's uh, tight and sealed, I see one problem with to allow the flow of carbon dioxide. Restricting how we can answer the tape here. Okay, I have I'm here for uh, number seven, Tamara George. Number seven, Tamara George, coming off the board. Looks like it came off cleanly. So as you put that tape on, just make sure we're all the way in the window, Luca, on the straightener. I'm going to double check on the outside gauge. Copy that. I the tape is all the way touching the edge, so it's a perfect gauge. Okay, excellent. So now you can line up the uh, AAF with the tube. We'll double check the numbers and then insert it. Okay, I confirm I have a box at seven. That's ex as expected, Luca. Tube 6 has been clean cut and marked off with tape using the clean cutter and the straightener to get it ready for swaging with the uh, alternate fitting. Okay, I mean, I do, uh, I'm in about uh, first the black line and about half an inch to go. Okay. I want to force you more than that. It's, it's definitely in past the line. Okay, Luca. We're handing over in uh, 30 seconds, Luca. So you can go ahead and get ready to swage, but uh, how about you wait for us on the other side before you actually turn the uh, turn the, uh, the wrench? Yes, we'll do that. Now in the middle of a short handover period, you're getting a look at the inside of the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Teams here looking over the International Space Station systems as well as the procedures for today's spacewalk. Teams here led by Flight Director Emily Nilsson. 
The voice you're hearing is Jeremy Hansen, the ground IV, communicating with the crew from here in Mission Control Houston. At the forward end of the screen, you see Jeff Radigan, who was the flight director for the first two spacewalks. Emily Nelson will be taking over for the next two. Okay, Luca, we're back with you. So keeping an eye on the tape and making sure it doesn't uh, move out of the AAF at all. That's the key point here, especially since we're already half an inch out. Uh, you're go ahead to give it one turn clockwise. Clockwise, numbers increase. Okay, keep an eye on the tape. We don't have WVS, so you guys, it's all on you to watch the tape. Regaining uh, some video communications from the International Space Station. Luca Parmitano undergoing the swaging what you're looking for Just of the tubes we're back on WVS everything looks good you see him using a wrench with the alternate fitting that AAF here's the tool he's using now there's a little bolt in the middle there all numbered doing a very small turn and all he's doing is just pinching that tube to the alternate fitting to ensure a good fit and good flow of carbon dioxide Just a simple uh, 7 eighths of an inch uh, wrench there. A small turn, but it should ensure a good fit. He'll have to do this six times at this work site. Tighten the VLI handle. Remember, give it a good firm tighten, and then we'll cycle the cap, close everything up. And I don't know how we, we didn't really talk about this, about taking a photo of these uh, prior to putting the MLI on. I don't know if that's practical or not. But we are doing reasonable on time today. That seemed to go pretty smooth, so we probably could take a photo. photo of the, want a photo of what? A photo of the AF before you pull the MLI over it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. We're not, nobody's actually asking you to do that. I just thought it was an idea you might want to take advantage of. If the VLI is open still. Uh, it's, it's, really, it's really close. I don't know if the camera in a good position to focus on it. Uh, yeah, understood. GoPro might be the better way to capture these uh, these AAFs. I don't know if that's going to be handy or not for future ones, but this is fine for now. Okay. And uh, you, I think I saw you tighten the VLI all the way. I did. It okay. was all tight and. Uh, all right, cover it up with the MLI. We're done. One down. Seven to go. Yeah, it was six. Going up and away. Okay. All right. That's great. So just a technique uh, observation in case it's helpful. There's. It looks like you're doing these like with the tube directly pointed at your chest. If that's awkward, don't be afraid to uh, change the orientation of uh, the tube coming out of the VSP. Okay. All right. Okay, Take no, your next lucky tube. tube. I think next one is seven. Okay. Whatever one's and convenient. One will be seven. Okay. We'll take seven. Seven. Drew, we need a rep. A... 
to the plug. This is Mission Control Houston. As mentioned, the first of six tubes on this work site are completed. There's two more on the other side to make eight tubes. It'll basically be uh, repeating the process eight times for swaging the tubes to the new pump box. Hotel six. Hotel six is a good number. Okay, opening up. Okay, I'm watching the WVS. Everything's looking good, Luca. You're, once you get the wrench on, you go to open the VLI. set that aside. Now we need to ret to tube 7. Bad ret ready. Drew, you can get the clean cutter ready. Clean cutter is ready. Clean ret. All right, ret for 7. 